वाटर द इलिक्सर ऑफ लाइफ बाय सी वी रमन लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड द कंप्लीट एस ए विद इंग्लिश एक्सप्लेनेशन मैन हैज थ्रू द एज इज सॉट इन वेन फॉर एन इमेजनरी इलिक्सर ऑफ लाइफ द डिवाइन अमृत और ड्राफ्ट ऑफ विच वॉज थॉट टू कन्फर इमोटैलिटी सी वी रमन सेज दैट मैन हैज सॉट इन वेन ही कैप्ट ट्राइंग फॉर इमेजनरी इलिक्सर इन अदर वर्ड्स वी कैन से अमृत बिकॉज मैन थिंक्स दैट दैट अमृत कैन ब्रिंग इमोटैलिटी टू हिम बट द ट्रू इलिक्सर ऑफ लाइफ लाइज नियर आर हैंड्स बट ट्रू इलिक्सर ट्रू अमृत दैट लाइज विद अस दैट इज इट इज द कॉमनेस्ट ऑफ ऑल लिक्विड्स प्लेन वाटर सी वी रमन सेज दैट प्लेन वाटर इज द रियली इलिक्सर अमृत दैट वी नीड रिमेंबर वन डे स्टैंडिंग ऑन द लाइन which separates the libyan desert from the valley of the nile in egypt he gives the example through libyan desert and valley of nile in egypt on one side was visible a sea of billowing sand without a speck of green or a single living thing anywhere on it on the other side lay one of the greatest most fertile and densely populated areas to be found anywhere on the earth teeming with life and vegetation cv raman says that on one side there was only sand billowing sand and there was no greenery no living thing and on the other side there was vegetation and it was teeming with life it was densely populated it was most fertile that is this area what made this wonderful difference why there was the difference on one side there was sand on other side there was greenery why it is the water of the river nile flowing down to the mediterranean from its sources a couple of thousands of miles away because of the water there was greenery on other side and desert because there was no water there geologists tell us that the entire soil of the nile valley is the creation of the river itself brought down as the finest silt in its flood waters from the highlands of abyssinia and from remote central africa and laid down through the aegis in the trough through which the nile flows into the sea here we have come to know that the creation of the river itself nile valley we say from abyssinia's highland to central africa then we see the trough where nile river flows then it has the silt finest silt that helps for fertility egypt in fact was made by its river its ancient civilization was created and is sustained by the life giving waters which come down year after year with unfailing regularity sivi raman says that in egypt we have seen the ancient civilization because here there was life giving waters and without any fail with full regularity water has been here that's why these civilizations were able to thrive i give this example and could give many others to emphasize that this common substance which we take for granted in our everyday life is the most potent and the most wonderful thing on the face of our earth sivi raman says that on earth this water is most wonderful thing and most potent and although it is a common substance but it is very important for all of us it has played a role of vast significance in shaping the course of the earth's history and continues to play the leading role in the drama of life on the surface of our planet on our planet and this water has been playing very important role and we can see it in the earth's history also there is nothing which adds so much to the beauty of the countryside as water be it just a little stream trickling over the rocks or a little pond by the wayside where the cattle quench their thirst of an evening sivi raman says that water is so much important even it adds the beauty also to the countryside and when we see the water trickling over the rocks or in a pond and that is very good scene to see and apart from it here cattle are able to quench their thirst also this way it has multiple uses also the rain fed tanks that are so common in south india alas often so sadly neglected in their maintenance are a cheerful sight 
when they are full c v raman says that in south india rain fed tanks tanks which get filled with rain water are so sadly neglected nobody pays attention to them to their maintenance and if they are maintained they look very good they are of course shallow but this is less evident since the water is silt laden and throws the light back and the bottom does not therefore show up these tanks play a vital role in south indian agriculture here cv raman says that for agriculture purpose they play very important role especially when it has silt laden and silt is very important because it makes the soil very fertile some of these tanks are surprisingly large and it is a beautiful sight to see the sun rise or set over one of them these tanks are very big and when we see the sun rising or setting and it is a beautiful sight to see water in a landscape may be compared to the eyes in a human face on human face as we see the importance of eyes the same way water has the importance on the landscape of the earth it reflects the mood of the hour being bright and gay when the sun shines turning to dark and gloomy when the sky is overcast when the sun shines then it looks very bright water looks very bright and gay and when there is dark it looks very gloomy one of the most remarkable facts about water is its power to carry silt or finely divided soil in suspension this is the origin of the characteristic color of the water in rain fed tanks we see that water has power to carry silt with it and silt helps in making the land very fertile and there is soil that silt is in the shape of soil which is in suspension in water and this is the characteristic of color because in rain fed tanks we can say that they have the muddy color this color varies with the nature of the earth in the catchment area and is most vivid immediately after a fresh inflow flowing rain and we can see clearly the color and when there is inflow of the rain and then it is clearly perceptible to all swiftly flowing water can carry fairly large and heavy particles the finest particles however remain floating within the liquid in spite of their greater density and are carried to great distances we can see the particles silt particles which are even heavy also large also and they keep floating in water because water keeps moving and it goes even to great distances such particles are of course extremely small but their number is also great and incredibly large amounts of solid matter can be transported in this way there is transportation of silt or particles to great distances this way also when silt laden water mixes with the salt water of the sea there is rapid precipitation of the suspended matter we see when the silt gets mixed with the salt water of the sea and there is precipitation suspended matter means all the particles of the silt go down the bottom of the sea this can be readily seen when one travels by steamer down a great river to the deep sea the color of the water changes successively from the muddy red or brown of silt through varying shades of yellow and green finally to the blue of the deep sea we can see the changes when we go by steamer down in the sea and we see the color keeps changing sometimes from muddy red or brown and sometimes with varying shades of yellow then green and ultimately everything is there blue because every particle of silt settles down that great tracts of land have been formed by silt thus deposited is evident on an examination of the soil in alluvial areas such land consisting as it does of finely divided matter is usually very fertile we see when the particles of silt settle down and that land becomes very fertile the flow of water has undoubtedly played a great part and a beneficent in one of the geological processes by which the soil on the earth surface has been formed from the rocks of its crust then we can see that great part of the earth which is beneficent then through geological processes we have come to know that the soil the earth surface has been formed this way the same agency however under appropriate conditions can also play a destructive part and wash away the soil which is the foundation of all agriculture and if allowed to proceed unchecked can have the most disastrous effect 
on the life of the country as we have seen that water has the power to carry the silt to carry the particles even heavy particles and it can play destructive part also we have to be very careful and this is the foundation of agriculture the problem of soil erosion is one of the serious import in various countries and especially in many parts of india because water has the power to carry the silt particles with it and that causes soil erosion and soil erosion it's a great problem in many countries including many parts of india the conditions under which it occurs and the measures by which it can be checked are deserving of the closest study we must carefully study these things understand these things and we should try to stop these things soil erosion occurs in successive steps the earliest of which may easily pass unnoticed it says that in the beginning we are not able to notice the soil erosion in the later stages the cutting up and washing away of the earth is only too painfully apparent in the formation of deep gullies and ravines which make all agriculture impossible at later stages as there is erosion on large level then it becomes impossible for using it for agriculture purposes because there are ravines and there are gullies and it is not possible to grow anything on it sudden bursts of excessively heavy rain resulting in a large run of surplus water are the principal factors in causing soil erosion when there is excessive rain surplus water then it causes soil erosion on a large scale contributory causes are the slope of the land removal of the natural protective coat of vegetation the existence of ruts along with the water can flow with rapidly gathering momentum and the absence of any checks of such flow when there is heavy rain and on the slope of the land we see the natural protective coat of vegetation also goes away because water pressure gets momentum and there is no stop no check for such flow of water incredibly large quantities of precious soil can be washed away if such conditions exist as is too often the case we have seen when there are heavy rains or floods we see large quantities of precious soil gets washed away generally this is the case the menace which soil erosion presents to the continuance of successful agriculture is an alarming one in many parts of india calling urgently for attention and preventive action we should prevent these things it needs our attention because it's the alarming situation because agriculture land would get washed away because of soil erosion the terracing of land construction of bunds to check the flow of water the practice of contour cultivation and the planting of appropriate types of vegetation are amongst the measure that have been suggested cv raman says that there are many ways to stop the flow of water by terracing of the land by construction of bunds by the practice of contour cultivation and by planting appropriate types of vegetation and these are the measures that he has suggested it is obvious that the aim should be to check the flow of water at the earliest possible stage before it has acquired any appreciable momentum and correspondingly large destructive power if the flow of water is not stopped or checked at the earliest possible stage then later on it becomes very destructive water is the basis of all life every animal or plant contains a substantial proportion of free or combined water in its body and no kind of physiological activity is possible in which the fluid does not play an essential part cv raman says that for all types of life may it be of animal may it be of plant water is required everywhere it may be more or less proportion but it is essential for everybody water is of course necessary for animal life while moisture in the soil is equally imperative for the life and growth of plants and trees through the quantity necessary varies enormously with the species as water is required for animals the same way it is required for plants for trees for their moisture yes it depends upon the species and varies enormously some need more water some need less water the conservation and utilization of water is thus fundamental for human welfare cv raman says that for our welfare we must conserve the water we must utilize the water properly apart from artesian water the ultimate source in all cases is rain or snowfall 
snowfall water rain water is very important and it is our ultimate source and we should artesian water means we should save the water in our tanks in our underground places much of indian agriculture depends on seasonal rainfall and is therefore very sensitive to any failure or irregularity of the same as indian agriculture heavily depends on rainfall that's why we have to be very sensitive because sometimes it may fail or it may be irregular the problems of soil erosion and of inadequate or irregular rainfall are closely connected with each other soil erosion and rainfall are connected with each other it is clear that the adoption of techniques preventing soil erosion would also help to conserve and keep the water where it is wanted in other words on and in the soil and such techniques therefore serve a double purpose here cv raman says that we have to prevent the soil erosion because water is required to be kept wherever rainfall is there it is evident however that in a country having only a seasonal rainfall an immense quantity of rain water must necessarily run off the ground because of heavy rainfall we have to deal with the water and we have to drain it immediately somewhere the collection and utilization of this water is therefore of vital importance much of it flows down into the streams and rivers and ultimately finds its way to the sea if we don't deal the excess water because of heavy rain then this water goes in the streams then it goes in rivers and ultimately it goes in the sea incredibly large quantities of precious fluid are thus lost to the country the harnessing of our rivers the waters of which now mostly run to waste is a great national problem which must be considered and dealt with on national lines cv raman says that precious fluid our water goes to waste and we should save it because of it there is soil erosion also and it's a great national problem and it should be dealt seriously vast areas of land which at present are mere scrub jungle could be turned into fertile and prosperous country by courageous and well planned action through well planned action and being bold we should turn our scrub jungle into fertile and prosperous land closely connected with the conservation of water supplies is the problem of afforestation the systematic planting of suitable trees in every possible or even in impossible areas and the development of what one can call civilized forests as distinguished from wild and untamed jungle is one of the most urgent needs of india cv raman says that we should go for afforestation we should plant the trees wherever possible and even in impossible areas also such plantation would directly and indirectly prove a source of untold wealth to the country they would check soil erosion and conserve the rainfall of the country from flowing away to waste and would provide the necessary supplies of cheap fuel and thus render unnecessary the wasteful conversion of farmyard manure into a form of fuel if we plant more and more trees there would be less soil erosion and we would be having the fuel also and this way we would be having great properties and assets for the country the measures necessary to control the movement of water and conserve the supplies of it can also serve subsidiary purposes of value to the life of the countryside this way there would be the value to the life especially in the countryside when there would be more and more forests by far the cheapest form of internal transport in a country is by boats and barges through canals and rivers we hear much about programs of rails and road construction but far too little about the development of internal waterways in india cv raman says that in india we can have internal waterways through rivers and canals and we can use the boats barges which will be the cheapest form of transport then again the harnessing of water supplies usually also makes possible the development of hydroelectric power the availability of electric power would make a tremendous difference to the life of the countryside and enable rural economy to be improved in various directions and not only this that would help us for the development of hydroelectric power also and that would be very helpful in our countryside and our economy would develop dramatically in one sense water is the commonest of liquids in another sense it is the much uncommon of liquids with amazing properties 
which are responsible for its unique power of maintaining animal and plant life water is so much important it is so good for animals and plant life it has amazing properties and we should know it and although it is the commonest of liquids but it is very valuable for us the investigation of the nature and properties of water is therefore of the highest scientific interest and is far from an exhausted field of research sivraman says that we should do the investigation on the nature and properties of water because it is of highest scientific interest and it is very valuable and we should do research on it and we can have maximum use of the same thank you hamdan